This lady, a devout Christian, can be seen crying and protesting on the streets of Colombo. She's calling on the Sri Lankan government to be able to have the right to bury her husband's body, but like so many other minority groups, the calls go unheard. Another young man sits heartbroken after his father was forcibly cremated. He prays for his sins to be forgiven. This is a situation for many COVID-19 victims' families in Sri Lanka. Over the past decade, Muslims in Sri Lanka have been subjected to various forms of violence, from repeated attacks on Muslim-owned businesses and homes and government-enforced policies that unequivocally impact the Muslim community unfavourably. The Sri Lankan government has made cremation compulsory for all COVID-19 related deaths, leaving many Muslims and Christians in the country unable to fulfil their religious rights of burying the dead. Heartbreakingly, Muslims in the country are left helpless by a policy that is not only a clear violation of human rights, but also a testament to the level of anti-Muslim sentiment in the country. In Islam, cremation is prohibited and as part of the funeral rites, any Muslim who passes away must be buried. When a Muslim is to pass away, it is the duty of those who remain to bathe the body, to then enshroud it with white pieces of cloth, and then to pray something known as Salatul Janaza, and thereafter to bury the body in the closest Muslim cemetery. The first COVID-19 death recorded in Sri Lanka was on the 29th of March 2020. This victim was forcibly cremated the next day without the consent of the family, while provisional guidelines at the time permitted burial. The government of Sri Lanka changed its regulations soon after to solely allow cremation of COVID-19 bodies or suspected of infection on 1st of April. The Ministry of Health promulgated regulation mandating only cremation policies on the 11th of April. Muslims perform four compulsory religious rituals towards a body. The Muslim community was seeking approval to conduct only one of them, which is burial. The community said they were prepared to compensate for any extra costs that the government would incur and to provide land to bury casualties. A public burial ground cannot be utilised for health and safety reasons. And we gave them a lot of concession. Right? We told them that uh, uh, we don't need to wash the body, we don't need to shroud them in white cloth. Right? We said we are free to uh, put them in sealed body bags and coffin. You bring them up to the Muslim graveyard. We will say a prayer uh, to the dead, right? Janaza prayers from 50 meters away from the body. The authorities or the health workers or whoever can do the burying themselves. Right? Mm. Uh, they didn't accept that. Representatives of religious, civil and political organisations requested the government authorities to review the policy. Many letters were sent and meetings were held. Sri Lankan minorities pleased to bury the dead remained unheard and this was unacceptable. However, Sri Lankan authorities have shown complete disregard for the religious obligations and fundamental rights of Muslims and some Christians in the country and continue to implement forced cremations. A senior medical officer told BBC that the buried bobbies may be used as biological weapons by terrorist groups. Several other pro-government academics and professionals have also supported the government's baseless and unscientific argument that the virus will contaminate groundwater and spread through the soil, a claim that has been refuted by world-renowned scientists and experts. Many professors and researchers have submitted scientific explanatory reports against the government's worry about water contamination. However, the problem was not only about forced cremation of COVID victims. There were complaints about people who tested negative or were found to be suspected to have contracted the virus, who were then forcibly cremated against their will and without obtaining family consent. නමුත් මෙම වාර්තා හතර අපි නැවත පරීක්ෂා කරා සෞඛ්‍ය අමාත්‍යාංශයට අයිති රසායනාගාර වලදී ඒකෙදී අපිට දැක ගන්නට ලැබුණේ මෙම වාර්තා කොරෝනා සහිත බවට දීලා තියෙනවා. Fatima Manasa was a 44 year old deceased Muslim woman who had even tested negative for COVID-19 and yet she still had to be cremated against the wishes of her family. Experts confirmed that Minosa had tested negative after her body was cremated. Mohammed Mahir told the People Rights Group 
that his uncle was admitted to hospital for wound treatments and had no symptoms of COVID-19 but was forcibly cremated after he died peacefully. Despite mounting evidence of a violation of human rights against the Muslim community, the government continued to adhere to a cremation only policy. Look at the Muslims. I mean, what are they asking for? They are asking for their last rights. They are asking, they are asking for the janazas to be buried. You know, these, these innocent Muslim people, they live all their lives according to the Quran. And right towards the end, their last right, you take it away for politics. You all should be ashamed. I'm ashamed. The government's Medical Officers Association of Sri Lanka sent a letter to the president stating that burials were safe as instructed by the World Health Organization. They also agreed that minorities should be allowed to bury the dead and that there is no scientific evidence that permits them to impose cremation. The College of Community Physicians of Sri Lanka positioned paper on the debate about compulsory cremation of victims of COVID-19. A letter signed by 16 ambassadors of Muslim countries to Sri Lanka was sent to President Gotabaya Rajapaksa. Various singular and Tamil Hello. political Hello. leaders, Hello. including opposition leader Sajid Premadasa and Gajendra Kumar Ponambalam, have spoken out against the policies in Parliament. <laughs> Chandrika Bandranaika Kumaratunga, the former president of Sri Lanka, also spoke out on social media, requesting for the issue of burials not to be politicised. Muslim Janata of Samogati and Vairak Nisa Kauruhari Antavadi Apeki and Baudin Kira Kiaga Nayagi Muslim Biro de Nisa May Antavadi Adahas Anua May again Miawasta Pavichikaran Paligan Nakela Api Pendum Karanda for the day. The Nisa Nevatanati Lasikno May Katuta Sambanda Gambura Tahita Balala Avanka Tindua Kandakela. Many Buddhist clergy and followers of Buddhism have spoken out against it on social media. Many of the families of the victims have lodged complaints with the Sri Lankan Human Rights Commission and HRCSL sent a letter to the Health Ministry of Sri Lanka. Similarly, many famous virologists and experts from Sri Lanka have spoken out against against this in a public interview. 11 cases were filed by the Muslim and Christian community in the Supreme Court of Sri Lanka, alleging violation of their fundamental right, which had been refused. Afterwards, after Supreme Court uh, hearing two days argument, dismissed the case, saying there is no reason to proceed, uh, which also very interesting, Sri Lankan Supreme Court does not need to give us any reason why they dismissed. In December 2020, the cremation of the 20-year-old infant of a Muslim family stirred public outrage and garnered the support of various communities and religious leaders against the mandatory cremation policy. The injustice done to Muslims and Christians was alarming and was brought to international attention. Baby Sheikh's father, Muhammad Fahim, had lost his job during the curfew imposed due to the pandemic. 
like many others, and was driving a three-wheel taxi to support his family. When he was informed that his infant son had tested positive for COVID-19 based on an antigen test, Muhammad, who was unable to afford the PCR test and his own income, sought financial assistance from family and friends to arrange for a PCR test to be carried out at a private hospital. <laughs> போல <laughs> ஆம்புலன்ஸ் வந்து உள்ளிருந்து எங்களுக்கு மறுபடியும் போல் அடிக்கிறாங்க நாங்கள் பார்த்துக்கிட்டீங்க வாரேன்னு சொன்னீங்க வரலை நாங்கள் இங்கே கணத்தை கொண்டு வந்துட்டோம் நாங்கள் இப்போ டாக்டர்கள் கணத்தை கொண்டு வந்துட்டோம் நீங்கள் வாரீங்கன்னா நீ கேட்டு அப்போ எங்களை இந்த சகோதரர்கள் போனாங்க இங்கே கேட்டு கேட்டாங்க இது என்னது எதுக்கு நீங்கள் இப்போ அவசரமாக கொண்டு வந்தீங்க உமாவா பட சைனு இல்லாமல் நீங்கள் எப்படி இல்லை அவங்க சொல்கிறாங்க உமாவா பட சைனு இல்லை இப்போ நீதி ஆகிக்குது இருபத்தி நாலு மணிக்கேட்டுக்குள்ளால யாரும் எதுக்கொள்ளாட்டி In the meantime, activists and civil society organizations commenced an island-wide protest against the forced cremation of Muslims by pieces of white linen onto the fence surrounding the Borella crematorium and gates of the protesters' households as a show of condemnation, and in other burial sites and public spaces. The protest was called the White Cloth Protest and went viral on social media. Sri Lanka Brief reported the protest gaining popularity The white handkerchiefs were tied to the iron fence by right activists as a protest against the forcible cremation of the 20-day-old baby. Later, the protesters used the hashtag white cloth protest to popularize the campaign, asking to tie a white piece of cloth wherever they could show solidarity with the demand for safe burials. The protest picked up and hundreds of white handkerchiefs were tied to the fence of the Kanati Cemetery in Borella. Government resistance to the campaign was seen after former Minister Mangala Samarira joined the campaign in tying white linen on the Barella crematorium fence. Overnight, the pieces of white cloth were removed from the fence and discarded. Many protests were held across the country while some protests were forcibly stopped by the government. Many parliamentarians and community leaders also organised a public protest in Colombo against the forced cremation issue. <laughs> Meanwhile, many initiatives have taken place outside Sri Lanka. Several human rights groups, including Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch, has condemned the violation of this fundamental right. United Nations Special Rapporteurs had also written a joint letter addressed to President Godabaya Rajapaksa asking for a reversal of the policy. More than 10 petitions with tens of thousands of signatures had been submitted through the Change website. Peaceful protests were held in many countries across the world. Some which they are provoking on us to suppress the minority. Senators, congressmen and women, parliamentarians and lords in Australia and the United Kingdom and other countries had spoken out and wrote letters to the Sri Lankan government on this matter. Some also wrote to their own governments to take a stronger stand against Sri Lanka and advocate for the right minorities to bury the dead. A decision by the Sri Lankan to mandate cremation uh, for all those deceased due to COVID. Ministers and officials at the High Commission in Colombo continue to urge uh, their government to ensure the protection of Christians, Muslims and other minorities in that country. More recently, Recently, the Sri Lankan government has introduced forced cremation for COVID-19 victims, a policy that has absolutely no basis in science and which rides roughshod over the traditional practices of Sri Lankans, Sri Lankan religious minorities, and which has rightly caused hurt and outrage amongst Muslim and Christian communities across the UK. We've heard from many community members and groups that they are devastated by a Sri Lankan government policy forcing the cremation of the bodies of people who have died from COVID-19. 
Sri Lanka Muslim organisations in Britain, Canada and other countries sent letters to Sri Lankan government calling for the mandatory cremation policy to be scrapped. The OIC expressed its condemnation and shared the issue on its website and social media. The UN resident coordinator in Sri Lanka, Hannah Singer, wrote to the Prime Minister calling for a review of the policy. The International Bar Association Human Rights Institute condemns the forced cremations in violation of traditional Islamic funeral practices of Muslim individuals who have died in Sri Lanka from COVID-19. Governments and EU organisations are under constant pressure from various human rights organisations. MCB, the Muslim Council of Britain, which is an umbrella body of 700 plus Muslim organisations in the UK, told media that they were going to take legal action against the Sri Lankan government for their cremation only policy. A group of Muslim families are launching a complaint to the UN Human Rights Committee about Sri Lanka's policy of enforced cremation of all those confirmed or suspected to have died with COVID 19, saying it breaches their religious rights. Reports of the Office of the High Commission for Human Rights to be submitted to the 46th session of the Human Rights Council had already been sent to the government of Sri Lanka, which had included under point 31 states, the COVID-19 pandemic has also impacted on religious freedom and exasperated the prevailing marginalisation and discrimination suffered by the Muslim community. The High Commissioner is concerned that the government's decision to mandate cremations for all those affected by COVID-19 has prevented Muslims from practising their own burial religious rights and has disproportionately affected religious minorities and exasperated distress and tensions. Although the government asserted to OHCHR, this policy is driven by public health concerns and scientific advice. The High Commissioner notes that WHO guidance stresses that cremation is a cultural choice. Sri Lankan Muslims have also been stigmatised in popular discourse as carriers of COVID-19, a concern raised by the High Commissioner in her global update to the Council in June 2020. After Member of Parliament Jit Gajendra Kumar Poonabalan raised the issue as a matter of urgent public importance in Parliament, Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa convened a meeting in Parliament and called for an expert advice on continuing with the cremation policy. After anger and objection over the forced cremation of the bodies of COVID-19 Muslim victims, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka has asked the authorities to find a suitable land to bury Muslim coronavirus victims. However, the Sri Lankan Health Expert Committee suggests that the burial of coronavirus victims shall not be permitted as the virus can surface from the buried infected bodies when there is heavy rain. Nirdesh Labadi Mata Patkala Visesakya Kamitue, Nirdesh Viti Benne, Corona Rogan Mian Pudgalenge Murta Deha, Ada Hane Kale to Bavai, Emanisa, Emma Pahadili, Nirdesh, Apakriatma Karna Vagema, Mimani Bayanaka Vasanga take at a Muna di Medi, Evani Visesakya Nirdeshian, Samaji Agamika Deshapal Nikaho. Around 11 members of the expert panel appointed by Sri Lanka's Health Ministry issues a report stating burials can be permitted. But the health minister told the media that they did not recognise the expert committee and they are waiting for another committee report. Some other politicians told the media that they have to take the final decision event the experts allow for burial. Many Buddhist extremists protested in Colombo to not allow the burials of COVID victims. After receiving this message, the president should approach us and not the other way around. The president is not above us. He must realize it. He cannot give us orders. We would like to request this government trying to bury the dead. Don't make the bhikkhus protest on the streets like this anymore. Implement the one country, one law policy. However, after 10 days, the government said that the remains of Muslims who died of COVID-19 will be sent to the Maldives for burial. Maldives president welcomed the request of the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, but again the plan was dropped after a public outcry in Maldives and strong opposition in Sri Lanka. Nearly after a year of many local and international initiatives to stop this human rights violation, finally Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa told Parliament that burial will be permitted. The statement of the Prime Minister was welcomed by Prime Minister of Pakistan Imran Khan and other dignities around the world. 
However, the following day, a co-cabinet spokesman, Minister Udaya Gamanapilla, stated that the Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa was only indicating his private opinion when he told Parliament that the burial of the remains of COVID-19 victims would be permitted. Yesterday, the Honourable Prime Minister made a very categoric statement that the burials will be permitted. And <clears throat> we are now hopeful now. I have said that this is a better late than never a mature decision by a very mature politician. So he, he understands the, the, the predicament of not only the government, the, the minorities, the reconciliation in this country. And uh, <clears throat> such an issue now repeatedly going back to the so-called expert committee, which is uh, full of people who are pseudo-scientists, is not going to solve this problem. The Honourable Ali Sabri knows that all, all Muslims on both sides have been agitating for this and finally the Honorable Prime Minister has given a solemn undertaking in this house. So what that more is, than that? Yeah. And he very clearly said, So now it is up to the, <coughs> the authorities in the health ministry who, who is better than the Prime Minister to make a decision on behalf of the government. And but who are these uh, so-called uh, experts in the health ministry who is blocking this, uh, unfortunately creating unnecessary racial tension in this country? It was because of this wavering position of the Sri Lankan government that the desperate Muslim community looked towards the international community to intervene and bring them relief. Tamil and Muslim minorities are being excluded by divisive and discriminatory rhetoric, including from the highest state officials. The policy of forced cremation of COVID-19 victims has caused pain and distress to the minority Muslim and Christian communities. In other words, long-standing structural and systemic issues persist in Sri Lanka. And now there are clear warning signs that past patterns of violation could be repeated. It was ultimately the mounting international pressure on the Sri Lankan government which made a significant difference. The visit of Pakistani PM Imran Khan on 23rd of February, along with the need for votes from Muslim countries when the resolution against Sri Lanka will be taken up at the UN Human Rights Council meeting, which tilted the scales towards allowing burials. Sri Lanka finally capitated and agreed to allow burials of the great relief of a community which has been at the butt end of state-sanctioned racism. It is indeed a testament to the tireless struggle of families of victims and human rights watchdogs activists both local and global as well as the pressure from the international community. The ending of this cruel practice which has not been scientifically proven to prevent the virus will thus allow the Sri Lankan Muslim minority a dignified burial in line with Islamic burial rights, a practice that allowed in more than 119 countries. But interestingly, the burial ban drama, which started off at the end of March 2020, citing pseudoscientific basis, ended a year later unceremoniously. The world needs to ask now, should not the government of Sri Lanka not be held to account for enacting this tragic comedy, which exposed the true face of racism of the establishment in the process? As Sri Lanka stands in its own shadow, President Gothabaya's government should reflect on the harm that racism has been causing the island and its many people. If the nation is to learn from history and forge ahead, not only the government must combat impunity, but it also must respect the legitimate concerns of the people, irrespective of racial or religious differences. Failure to do so fails humanity as a whole. <laughs>